In this lecture, I am going to show you how to add Bootstrap to your Ruby on Rails application. Uh, in one of the texts that we have, um, the, uh, the one with uh, Rails and Angular and, and Postgres, um, they use um, a, a different methodology for, um, uh, for integrating Bootstrap. Um, and, you know, that's all fine, although um, I have seen that it is, it's difficult to use it within Cloud9, and, and I think there is actually other ways that are, that are better for doing this. And so we're going to do, we're going to use um, the content delivery network as a way of being able to add Bootstrap into our applications rather than using um, the, the method used in that book. So uh, there are a few files that I need to modify. I need to create a file um, in order to make this work. Uh, we're not going to use our approach like we had used in Jekyll, where we load it, we install all the files or anything like that. And instead, we're just going to do a little bit of configuration, um, add a couple links, and then we'll be done. So the first thing that we need to do is I'm going to add a helper. And this is actually, this is even sugar here, um, but uh, it's a good way to keep the, uh, the version consistent across um, several, um, um, several iterations of your application. So I'm going to add a helper called uh, layout helper rb. And in this file, I'm going to create a module called Layout Helper. I'm going to define uh, Bootstrap version. And this is just so that, again, so that we can keep the, the versions um, consistent with the latest and greatest. I uh, did look at the um, uh, bootstrap web page to see what the current version is and it's 3.3.7 is the current stable version um, and so I'm going to put this thing in here to replace with most recent version and I'm just doing this again so that uh, whenever we uh, whenever the recent ver most recent version or whenever a new version is created we can just change the number here and not have to do it everywhere Okay, so that's the first thing we need to do. Second thing I'm going to do is uh, make a change to the base template that's used for pages in um, in Ruby applications. And uh, we had something like this in Jekyll where we had a base template and that was used for all the pages. And a similar kind of thing happens here in uh, Ruby. So that's what this file is. This is the um, uh, application HTML.erb, and that the way that this works is, this is the file that gets generated for each or is used as a template for each page. Um, the thing that we're going to change is what appears in the head, as well as some things that happen here in the body. Um, so, first thing I'm going to do, going to do is um, add a add some text for a. Uh, for a link to the bootstrap code um, that's coming in from the um, um, from the CDN and I'm just going to copy and paste this in and I, I will provide you with a link to the um, um, to um, some examples that show this but um, I'm going to change this to max CDN the uh, what we're doing here is putting a, a link to the actual bootstrap code and you'll see here the bootstrap version is is here. This is the, the thing that I just created here and that'll get replaced into this. So this this is again some embedded Ruby. Um, and then what's happening here is we're defining this as a style sheet and we get uh, and we're pulling in a minified version of the CSS file uh, for bootstrap. Uh, the minified version is actually just a compression of all of the all of the text all onto one line. Um, just kind of a standard thing that's happened in web development for quite some time. So instead of having all of the the tabs pretty pretty version, it's a um, uh, just a single line version of it. It's and it's not really meant for for visual 
uh, comprehension. It's more of just a compact form. Okay, so that's uh, the first thing we need to do. I need to add, I'm going to add some things here to explicitly turn off turbo links. Turbo links is a um, uh, uh, it's something that was added to Rails 4, and uh, it, it helps with um, actually making the application run faster. But there seems to be a conflict with um, uh, with Angular JS, and we're going to be using that later. So we're going to go ahead and leave that off for now. I'm just going to explicitly turn those off. I think when we created the application, we had them off anyway, so that's not it's probably not even necessary that I put that in there. Um, okay, so the next thing is actually, um, I think maybe in the original version of this, I might have had these tags up here. I don't think it actually matters where they go. So I'm going to put them at the end anyway. Um, so, to go there. Right. One of the things I need to do is add a div. This is uh, necessary for uh, for Bootstrap that we put everything within a container. Bootstrap container. So the body of anything that we're going to be styling will go that will go um, within there. This yield. Uh, this is you know the it's sort of like the content tag in in um, uh, in Jekyll, um, and here um, this will end up being replaced with, at least uh, you know in uh, what we'll see, this is going to be in the, ending up being replaced with this text here. Okay, we're almost done. I need to add in some more text um, for Bootstrap, and I'm going to do another copy and paste for this. Um, what we're adding here is the CDN um, link to bootstrap uh, the JavaScript portion of this. And this goes at the bottom of the file um, after the page has been loaded. This it's created. And again, the bootstrap version um, is taken from that helper. OK, just one more thing, and then we'll be done. Uh, I want to style the logout. Um, the logout button or the logout link, uh, but it's all written in a um, uh, embedded Ruby, and so uh, link two is um, a this creates a link, the label logout, and then this is the path that ends up being traversed to when you click on that link, and I just want to style this as. Um, as root, or sorry, with Bootstrap. So I'm going to add in the class tag, and I'm going to style this as the button, as a primary button. And that should that should do it um, for this example. Make sure I save all the files. I think I saved them anyway, but I'm going to make sure this time. Uh, and then um, go on the server. So let's try that. On the server and log in. So if you see here, this is this is styled differently than what we had originally. Um, as a matter of fact, let me break it. by taking out the style sheet header here, or the parameter, and break it. And so if you see here, so this is sort of the default styling. That's not very pretty. Um, if I put the style sheet tag back in there, this is marginally better. I mean, it's using the, the Bootstrap default fonts. At some point, we're going to want to style this button, but leave it for now. Um, and actually, there's a special thing that we need to do in order to get that styled properly. So log in. Oop, I've got something wrong here. 
Um, oh, I missed a comma. I missed a comma. So here the the message is telling me where the problem is, and I didn't put a comma after specifying this class case, so I need to fix that. So here it is. It's the styled with Bootstrap. Here's that button that I styled, so it's no longer just a regular link. That's now using Bootstrap styling for uh, for the lockup button. So that's uh, that's basically that's basically it. Um, there is a web page that describes how to add Bootstrap from the CDN. I drop this in here for now. This is where I. Um, this is what I used for that. Um, the URL is there if you can read it. I will also have a link to this um, in the um, in the description of this um, uh, of this video. Um, but that's essentially what I've done here is to, to use that method for adding Bootstrap to our page, and we see that um, that we do have the. Uh, and the styling that we wanted. So in the next uh, lecture, next online lecture, we're going to um, see how we can style the login page, the sign-in page, because um, we don't actually have this source code um, in our application yet, so we need to pull that in so that we can, we can style it. So anyway, that concludes this.